Hi guys, welcome to the TNT Show. Today's show is sponsored by Performance Guards. This is G and this is Matt and I am Kira. Street Fighter V's coming out today. You guys excited? Oh yes. Perfect. Street Fighter V just came out. Street fighting games have really taken off. How do you guys feel about the current gaming market? I, th I think it's very strong. I think we're kind of coming to the point where we're going to see electronic fighters <laughs> supplanting real fighters. I think eventually uh, the direction that things are going with, say, the investigations in the NFL and all the CTE issues, the people are kind of uh, somewhat losing their, their taste for actual physical destruction of people and they're, they're going to eventually start, I mean, over the generations are going to start preferring uh, electronic simulated destruction of people for entertainment and money. And I think, the, I think professional gaming is going to uh, eventually take the place of physical, uh, physical mortal combat. I, uh, I agree with that. I think that that's the direction it's going. The other thing that's happening is that the, the gaming purses are getting bigger for everything, for eSports mm -hmm. as well. So you just got bigger purses. It used to be that Madden was the only competitive video game, really. Mm -hmm. Like it was like Madden. And then you had the eSports on the side, which the fighting game folks still think of themselves a little separate from that. Um, but the fighting gamers, Evo, uh, Evo tournaments are getting so big that game manufacturers have to make a game. The, the tricky part, the problem that they're gonna have is game manufacturers have to make a game that's gonna be professionally, professionally, you know, professionally successful, but also casual gamers have to be able to play. Yeah. Um, the Street Fighter series is alone on its own pedestal because Capcom yeah. puts everything behind it, but this game's gotta hit. This game's gotta hit for pro gamers or it's not, it's not gonna work. Mm -hmm. uh, some other manufacturers like Killer Instinct, they're doing more casual game friendly mechanics where you can do these super combos with less inputs to while you're learning it and that type of thing. So it's always been, fighting games have always been hard because it's hard to tutorialize it like yeah. you can a standard game. So you to keep the you either have to have just cool design and cool characters and cool things, or you have to have mechanics that make somebody because you can't just go to an arcade and put in quarters and right. people can get it get home and they're going to be as comfortable with it as they are, or they're not, you yeah. know. Uh, but I think the market in general has started to blossom again. Yeah, um, fighting games in general are picking up, and and with the fact that everybody's got a home system now, also helps. Mm -hmm helps that because you don't have to go to arcade to play and to play top level people you just go online and yeah. you play you can play as much quality as you can so i i love it i really enjoy watching it on twitch um i follow lots of the big the big uh, the big timers that play and they show you how they play and there's videos and it's it's a really a renaissance in mm -hmm. fighting game i think do you think street fighter 5 is going to pick up the same kind of um, momentum that street fighter 2 got when back when it was a line of kids standing at the console with with quarters racked up on the machine saying I got next uh, or I mean and, and it wouldn't be at that location because right. arcades are dead but right but like, are there going to be people you know home. lined up in, yeah. in virtual lobbies right. going I'm, I'm playing against this guy next well you know one of the things that hurts is the is the death of the arcade mm -hmm. but because on you know the thing that games the games have to do is that Street Fighter 5's net code has to be awesome that's the biggest thing. Yep. Their net code has to be great. If their net code is great, then everybody can play at home and I've got next, that type of thing. The real trick with Street Fighter Five you're gonna have is so Street Fighter Four is almost five years old. Yeah. And so it's grown and grown and grown and grown and the Capcom Cup has grown and Twitch has grown. Um, and so Street Fighter Four is huge. So Street Fighter Five has to do the same thing in a different way because they can't make it the same. They they seem to be making it better for beginners. But uh, it's it's an, it's going to be a big jump. But everything's bigger. The muscles are bigger. Yes, everything <laughs> is bigger. It's not about size. It's how you use it. <laughs> so Capcom that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's time for the TNT round. Let's get rolling. Oh. Yeah, I went there. So. <laughs> You guys remember Dive Destiny, of course you remember, because this is a week ago. Die of Destiny! Someone, if I roll 18, 19, or 20, 
is going to win either 50 or 60 if I get a critical. Da -da -da -da. We're on here. So let's see how we do. Oh. oh. Palpable sadness. So it's just a four. So... So our season, we had, what do we have, two winners two this winners. season? Three, yeah. three winners this season, I've been told by our wonderful off-camera staff. Three winners. <laughs> Time to draft some teams. Yay. Woo. For the red team, it rhymes. we have Sarah Bear. Congratulations, welcome to the red team. Matt, would you like the box of... Wonder. The box of, yeah, whatever we want to call it. Uh, the blue team, we've got Denise A. Welcome, Denise. Denise. A. Welcome. Welcome to the final members. Blue team. A prize for this week is a poster straight from BlizzCon. A very nice poster of a crusader from Diablo 3. Finally, a challenge. It's the championship round. And usually it's best two out of three, but today it's best three out of five. The winning team gets to choose one prize from all the prizes you've seen so far. You guys ready? Oh yeah. Okay guys, first question. What's the best fighting move? Other than like kick to the head. Yeah. Boop to That's the head. always Boop to the head. Boop to the head. <laughs> <laughs> like a special move? Yeah. The, the best special move is the classic fireball. Hadouken! It's the most used move. Yeah. Maybe it gets spammed a little bit too much, but yeah. it's fantastic. Yeah. It's highly effective. It's pretty impressive if you imagine it like in real terms. Yeah. You Entire know, game guy game shooting a fire yeah. a fireball. Right, right. And and if you're playing a character who has a fireball, you have to base your entire strategy for fighting them against when that fireball is coming out, yeah. how long their refresh is, um, their or their recovery before they can throw another one, uh, how fast it is, how much damage it does. Yeah, all, all of that. The fireball dictates each fight if you have a fireball character. And yeah. so, fireball. Of course, the red team wanted a fire. Of course. <laughs> of course. Except I'm not the red team. <laughs> oh, you're right. I'm the blue team. But blue fireballs are cool. Yeah. That's true. You'd be Azula. Yeah. Used to be glitches. Yeah, yeah. Red's <laughs> fireball is a blue fireball. So. Oh, it was the red fireball the glitch? Red fireball was the glitch. Okay, I forget really? colors. And eventually sometimes. they built it into the game. Uh, so, mine is almost in the fireball subset. Uh, mine is Scorpion Spear, the Get Over Here Spear. Get over here! It was like the next level of projectiles where he threw it and he grabbed somebody over. And then, of course, in Mortal Kombat, the uppercut was the most amazing thing you could do. <laughs> so a setup to the uppercut was was just the way to go. And, the, you know, obviously when the game first came out, everybody was, Get over here! Because it was just, just like a convergence of all of the wonder that a violent game could have a spear to the chest and then an uppercut uh, but I want to give an honorable mention to the dive kick it's a more recent popular one so much so that they made a fighting game just called dive kick where you just try to dive kick <laughs> right, on top of people right. <laughs> so dive kick is an honorable mention but uh, scorpion spear Scorpion Spear actually gets some points for being the easiest move. Yeah, it was back do. forward and hit the button. I thought it was back, back button. Oh, it was back, back button. You're right. Yeah. Back forward and button was the Liu Kang's fireball. Yes. Yeah, that's right. Okay. And yeah. so, incidentally, that was the first move I learned in Mortal Kombat. Because <laughs> it was the first one I wanted to learn because it was yeah. so damn cool. Yeah. But then also that it was easy, and it was easier than the fireball. Right, right. Mm -hmm. And let's see what the people think. Hey, this is the Rev here at Mythic Games. Let's find out what our friends have to say about our host's answers. I'm Jordan. I own Mythic Games in Lehigh, Utah, and we do a lot of nerd stuff, so come on down and check us out. And they do it well. Definitely the Hadoken. I wasn't allowed to play Mortal Kombat growing up. It's, you know, too scary for me. So, I, I still actually haven't played Mortal Kombat to this day. I think my mom was scared of me being illiterate with that whole KC thing. Yeah. I, I can read decently well, but mostly just playing cards. Probably the Fireball. I would say Fireball too. I would definitely yes, say it's it's some it's being here. It's pretty Personally, I go with the Scorpion Get Over Here. Just because, I mean, kind of traditional. Scorpion, favorite character in, in the series, and I just, I love how he says the Get Over Here. It's just so funny. Get over here, Scorpion. I mean, it's it's OP, and whenever you choose Scorpion in the game, everyone says, mm, yeah, no, I, I quit. And we get one point for red. Yay! All right. But, but would you rather face a real spear or a real fireball? I would like Come to on. see you try and shoot out a fireball. Does the blue dart count? 
I was going to say, right now I'm more concerned about the spear just today. Like I could walk outside and get hit by a spear. Right. I haven't yet been hit by a fireball. It's possible. I suppose. Yeah. You have yet? Does that mean you have been hit by a spear? I have been hit by a spear. Yeah, I have actually been hit by a spear. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Question number two. What's the best element that has existed or you want to exist in a game? Go ahead, Jane. Uh, for me, uh, I think one of the things that doesn't get played with enough, it started to get played with, is the fighting game arena. I really wish in a game where you could fall off the arena, you had a slowly... Uh, a stage that gets smaller, slowly closing. So that changes, you know, footsie mechanic, it changes the, the way the game plays because it keeps getting shorter and you have to work with space. And I think there's a lot of games that could change the way it's played with that kind of mechanic. So just a shrinking fighting arena. Yeah, like as it, as it shrinks, things that are in the background become the foreground or things right. that were, were too large to interact with now become just yeah. your size. Different interaction, different, yeah, you could do a lot of stuff with that. Yeah. That would be cool. For me, I would go with um, uh, more dynamic characters where uh, as the fight progresses, there there are consequences to what happens. So, for example, if you get one of those crazy Mortal Kombat breaks where they break somebody's forearm uh, or their upper arm and you get the, the x-ray of it, you see that the bones are broken, they can't just continue to fight along and right. maybe, maybe that disables the X button or something like that for the rest of the fight and the characters... Uh, ability to fight is affected, but also their style of fighting has to change. And so, as you're playing, it's sort of sort of like evolve, but in the reverse, so a devolve. And you're, you know, maybe you're wearing armor, and you, if you're wearing wearing a helmet, you get hit in the head with a with a, a bow staff. Then your helmet falls off, and then and then at the, after that, your your head is far more uh, vulnerable. But maybe you're a little bit quicker. And so, to have the characters completely change uh, through the course of the fight and and that way, um, you know, some of the characters will get stronger as they as they lose things, and some of the characters would get would get weaker. Um, I think that would be would play really well as people are deciding which character to fight against which other one. And some some of them would be would be really well rounded, and other ones would would be the sort of sleepers that you know once you once you really have them on the ropes is when they go into their berserker rage and get super right. tough. On a quick aside. Those mechanics are weird. They weirdly exist, and one the 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 X-ray kind of damage Bushido blade, the first Bushido blade, yes. had it to where you could damage a limb and they couldn't use it. Right. You know, and then in the Soul Calibur series, in the most recent ones, they had it to where if you took enough damage in certain areas, you broke their armor and you broke their. Mm -hmm. But it didn't. It, it was just a side, a little tiny mechanic. It wasn't a yeah. big. <laughs> it wasn't but, something that happened really frequently. That's the nature of making it for pro gaming. I think is one of the reasons that that isn't as prevalent is it adds a yeah. little x factor that's unplanned planned for a bowl yeah but but casually it's awesome yeah but part of what pro gaming needs is depth well that's true you know because it needs to be where you can i mean and that could be even something that you could enable or disable right. for the casual gamer who who can't really handle all the variables versus somebody who's got everything down every possible interaction every possible you know overlap and all the timing they, they know absolutely everything about it right. then then give them just a little bit more to deal right. with right and what do the people say? A uh, slowly shrinking fighting area because the added pressure is pretty intense. I'd have to say the devolving fights, though. I mean, you actually have to think about what you want to use. I would go the same way. Like, if it's more realistic, right? If you fight in a normal fight, it would be like you break bones and you, you get hurt, so you have to deal with it, so it gets more realistic and more fun. I think I'd have to go with the devolving fight. Um, personally, just because, I mean, the shrinking stage does kind of make you realize, you know, you've got to speak this up and do this, but um, the involvement fight at least tells you, you know, at all points in this game, you've got to, you know, keep your guard up and up. I would definitely rather play a involvement fight. Yeah, I'd rather play a That seems interesting. I would, I'd definitely want to try that one. Devolving fight, because I love just seeing everything break and get destroyed. And the point goes to blue team. Well done, blue team. Ooh. Good job, blue team. All right, third question. What, who is the best fighting character? Like ever. Like ever, ever. Um, I'm going to have to go with Raiden, who, I will give a caveat, Raiden is not necessarily the best character to play in a fighting game, um, but he's the god of lightning and the god of thunder, and... So as far as if we're talking about ever, I mean, first of all, he's going to live forever. So he's going to outlive all those other loser <laughs> fighters anyway. Um, but, but second, I mean, just in, in terms of sheer power that he has, um, he's amazing. 
but then also there's the big trouble in Little China factor, which we can't, <laughs> we really can't overlook. Um, you know, ask Jack Burton who the best fighter ever is, and he'll tell you. Nice. Mm -hmm. I have a prop for my character that I didn't even think about that I made this prop until last night on a totally separate reason. <laughs> but this is for, let's see if we can, if we can get the audio. This is for my character. Russian wrestling is always number one. So that's Zangief. And I love Zangief. He's the best wrestling character in a game. He's the prototype wrestling character. He's my char favorite character to play, so that's really, I'm biased. Um, as, a young, as a young man wrestling fan, I grew up with wrestling. And he's just, they made his voice awesome. They made his look awesome. Um, you know, they just gave him the, the tidy whitey reds and, you know, he's <laughs> got the bear s scars and just hair and and he his, in one of his endings he dances with Mikhail Gorbachev. I mean, he's just <laughs> my favorite. So Zangief is my choice. A Russian who wrestles bears is a little on the nose. Well, you know. That'd Capcom, be like the, the all-American guy who fights against eagles and has all sc scars on it for me. Yeah, you know, <laughs> Capcom didn't really shy away from doing a bad job with that right you know i mean they're just like okay there's the indian guy that blows fire and hangs out around elephants and they're you know mm -hmm. so yeah it was on the nose but it, they didn't make him a drunk guy so that's true <laughs> point for capcom <laughs> Do the red speedos have a hammer and sickle on them? Somewhere? No, they didn't. He, he, they pushed away communism pretty quickly. Okay, they, they decided no, none of that. So, plus his cameo in Wreck It Ralph. Yes, yes. fantastic. Yes. I'm Zangief. I'm bad guy. And let's go to the people. Raiden. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Raiden too. That's the only possible choice you could go for here. Raiden. That's tough. <laughs> I would probably, oh. probably go with Zangief, yeah. He's he's the Russian, right? With the sexy, sexy beard. Zangief, I am bad guy. <laughs> Definitely. Raiden. All right, another point for blue team. All right, blue, blue team's point away. Uh -huh. Woohoo! Okay, guys, who is the worst fighting game character? Uh, I'll start with this one. They did a game called Fighters Mega Mix. Sega did it. And one of the characters they included was the Daytona 500 car from Daytona USA as a fighting character. <laughs> and was it think, anthropomorphic? No, it just it just was wheels. It just was a car standing up fighting. It wasn't like a body or anything. It was just a car. <laughs> and so I don't think I need to say anything more than that, quite honestly. <laughs> did it have like an airbag that would pop out and hit people? <laughs> it was not that creative. No, it just really kind of did a racing move and a jumping forward and you know it used its little wheels to yeah yeah <laughs> it didn't even transform uh, no nope come on yeah yeah there you go his name was hornet i gotta should mention hornet was the name of the car okay was it a hudson uh my vote for worst fighting game character ever is um, I'm actually not sure if it's just one of them or if there are multiples or millions of them because they're all the same There's right. palette swaps. It would be the fighters from karate champ yeah. Because if you ever tried to play that game, you know how completely anticlimactic it is. Yeah, yeah you Put your money in get ready ready fight yep. They punch you one time and you guys just lays down yep. <laughs> yep. Like wait, how did I do that? You got this crazy control scheme that yeah. you know You're reading on the side of the cabinet to figure out how can how can I do this sweet Jean Claude Van Damme spin kick? Yeah. Break this guy? No, you can do anything cool, and you just just one kick and you're down. Oh hey, yeah. I lost. Let's try again. <laughs> no thank you. Karate I Chan. played a lot of that game too, but it's sad. I played it a bit and just didn't enjoy it at all. Yeah, I'd, I'd probably give him honorable mention to Pit Fighter. Oh, Pit you know, Fighter! Like awful. like everybody from Pit Fighter. That's the worst fighting game I've ever played. <laughs> <laughs> The Hornet, definitely. The Hornet, too. I mean, that's just weak and small. I don't know if you're one of those guys, and I'm pretty sure uh, Battletoad, though, that's probably the worst fighters ever. I don't know, the Hornet yeah, sounds like, did you win here? Guys from Karate Champ. Don't really know what they are, but let's just say Karate Champ. So we'll go with Hornet. And the fighting car is the worst yes. fighting character ever. The only time the fighting car was a winner is today. It's true. It's uh, tiebreaker question time. Yeah, it's tiebreaker. <laughs> okay, guys. What movie series would make the best fighting game? I'm gonna have to go with the more, the most recent one that I can think of, which would be the Hunger Games. Mm. I think you have 
pretty nice cast of characters. I mean, it could definitely be, be fleshed out a little bit better. The, the, the second Hunger Games um, would definitely do better, you know, but, but like most video games, your sequels are better than, than your original. So you start with the original, have it be a, a solid base where each of your characters from the different districts has different abilities. Um, and then you mix in uh, like a, a little bit of a campaign mode where each of them uh, wants to try to keep other characters alive while while eliminating certain characters. I mean, yeah. you, the problem there is that you kind of avoid the entire moral lesson of well, the right. entire series, but it's a fight which is game. that isn't yeah. this horrible and yeah, no one yeah. should have to participate this yeah, yeah, in this. Yeah. And these are children killing children. So. Um, if you could sidestep that somehow, if, then, then I you, think the game would be great. Wrote a new Hunger Games story where they get to do it in VR and they don't have to actually kill people. Exactly. See, mm -hmm. there you now go. Now we're back to yeah. esports taking over real sports. There you go. Yeah. And, <laughs> and the you know the people and the the contestants in the Hunger Games instead of dying would just live in shame. You know, yeah. which is you know not yeah. so bad. Yeah. But then it would Very be just right. everybody yeah. would play Katniss Everdeen all the time, well, and right. she'd be the. Well, the arrow mm -hmm. would be the new fireball. Well, now we're yeah. mixing arrows, uh, spears and fireballs yeah, again. Spears and arrows. I went easy. I, I didn't quite go as easy as Street Fighter the movie, which is what I was going to choose. <laughs> <laughs> that seems silly. Wait, they turned Street Fighter the movie into a into game. A game. It was into a game. It was a game oh based a movie based off of a game that made a game that was based off of the movie off of the game. Yeah, and it was bad. A bad game based Aww, off of a bad movie bad. based off it of a good game. It was media incest. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. That's why you had a retarded child. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. It birthed the bad one. Uh, so instead, I chose Pacific Rim. I mean, just uh, especially if you added the customability aspect, and maybe you got to choose the people that went in there, and that mm -hmm. changed the ability slightly. You can do a lot of fun stuff with it. Add some monsters too, so you have robots and some monsters, and then all of a sudden you could combine it with the Godzilla. I mean, you I could run with it if you really yeah. wanted to, but I think it it's just set up for cool abilities and flashy things and cool stages and. Uh, Pacific Rim would be a fun fighting game series. That could make for some really interesting co-op too. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. If you had two people trying to, yeah. Mm -hmm. Could be. And, could be what are and you could even have a sub game, like a mini game of, you know, like in the movie where you have the characters uh, fighting each other physically. So you could take yep. the humans out of the robots right. and, and have, have a little right. sub fighting game yep. Yep. to help determine um, how synergistic the two characters are together right. or something, or, or you could build experience points right. with them or something like that. Or even just have yeah. a sub sub level you know sub mode of that we do that and maybe you level up the actual characters for your player you've leveled right. them up by playing through the sub modes you could like also that. do something like uh their health bars like you have them fight at the very beginning and then when after a certain time limit then they come out like the machines break down and then the humans come out and fight and whoever was winning the fight before has like a better, better advantage bar. because they have a better yeah. bar yep human yeah. fighting is always thumbs up I'm yeah for human fighting and giant robot fighting yeah, doesn't love true. giant robots. Yeah. And Idris Elba's character would always have one button dedicated to saying, don't touch me. <laughs> <laughs> one, don't you ever touch me again. Two, don't you ever touch me again. Nice, safe answer. Yeah, I think I'd like to retract my answer. I've been, <laughs> I've been convinced that Pacific Rim would be a far better game. <laughs> Do you want to admit that? <laughs> I just did. <laughs> it's on camera. We're rolling. <laughs> Probably Hunger Games, because, you know, it, it could happen. It could it could become a thing. Hunger Games, totally, too, because it has been a thing with, like, all those, like, in Rome and stuff like that, when they were fighting person to person. So, obviously, it's something that appeals to the humanity, although it shouldn't, but it does, kind of. Pacific Rim, and so. That movie was really cool, and Hunger Games was lame. I don't know, like, you can't really capture the political intrigue on a fighter. I would rather play the Pacific Rim game, that sounds like a lot of fun. Oh, I don't like Hunger Games, I think that too. With Hunger Games, you kind of have to have the tactical and everything like that. I mean, you have to go and collect resources and still have to, you know, fight. I'd say Hunger Games, that, that seems interesting. Hunger Games. Because I, I love the series and I love fighting games, so I just think it would be a cool mix. And the point goes to Blue Team. Blue All Team right. wins! Blue Team Woo! wins championship round. And there was yeah. much rejoicing. Yeah. Congratulations, Yay. Blue Team. Yeah, congratulations. It's excellent. Yeah. I, I do have to admit that I think Pacific Rim sounds like a much better <laughs> game <laughs> than the Hunger Games. I've been won over by the, uh, by the argument. I'll still take the point, though. You'll yeah. take the point. Yeah, well, know. hey, Blue Team, you guys still win. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, just a note, both Blue Team and Red Team 
if you've been drafted this season, make sure that you contact us, either the email or tweet at us, the information in the description. The blue team gets to pick from the prizes that we've displayed over the 12 weeks, but the red team also gets a consolation prize. All right, well, I have one more question for you guys. Which world leaders would you like to see go head on in a fight? Like real life? No, like God, Mortal Kombat. With weapons? Yeah. Whoa, whoa. Now you've taken it to another level, and unfortunately, there's no time. I gotta say George Washington and Abraham Lincoln. Bush Jr. and Hillary Clinton. Just think it'd be funny seeing them go head to head. Kim Jong-un versus Kim Jong-il. Ghost of the Ancestors. <laughs> I think that'd be pretty fun. I like it. The names got the title. Done. Geniuses, as Monk would say, make it happen. Well, like, of all the world leaders we always had, is Genghis Khan and Hitler would probably be fun. Putin and Trump. Honestly, that'd be hilarious. That'd be, that'd be hilarious. You're assuming Trump's a world leader already. I don't know. Shh. He, he acts like he is. That's all that really matters. I, I, it would be fun to watch him get his butt handed to him. I mean, I would go Jesus against Santa Claus personally. <laughs> I'd love to see that. <laughs> Alright, thanks for joining us. And until next time, just remember, I ate your chocolate covered squirrel. <laughs> just pretty terrible. It's awful. <laughs> just awful. What? Like, it's, it's, so, yep. it's so terrible it's in concept. It's terrible yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's the there's a scenario down. where that could have been executed. Yeah, uh, it could have been again. great. If and it, it were, was like funny, you know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. If, if the car would like shoot a tire iron off at people, or you know, I mean, I like the idea of an airbag. That's still one. super lame. Yeah, an airbag or like an airbag defense or something. Right. Like, yeah. I don't know. An oil yeah. slick. Yeah, it could yeah. be like the spy hunter car. Yeah, yeah something to and make it, might, it I only saw. I, I only pl ever played it like one time with it, and I've only seen a couple stills. I don't even think anybody's got any video of this stupid thing. Right. So it might have a couple more creative things, but in general. It's still a standing up car. Okay. Maybe there's some real gold to mine there where you can have an entire game made out of just fighting cars. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I feel like that would be. You'd have the electric be... cars and that have like Raiden type powers. Oh, the hybrids could have a special smug smug level. Like <laughs> <laughs> smug power. Yes! Use the power of smug. <laughs> It makes me think of the Street Fighter 2 bonus level. Yeah, beat, beat up, up the car. Yeah. That was payback. <laughs> <laughs>